What's up, Laker fans? It wasn't pretty, but the Lakers found a way to win in Brooklyn. Let's take a look at how it all went down. Ingram started at point guard in this game, and this is the best I've ever seen him push the pace. Even before the ball's inbounded, he's already off to the races. No one stops the ball and he gets all the way to the rack. Look at how much time is on the shot clock. It took him just three seconds to go coast to coast. You want him made or miss taking that ball up and really flying up the court. So a lot of that he created on his own, the assist. Uh, you know, a couple times with his pace alone, he got, I think, Josh Hart a wide open three in transition got to the basket for himself, collapsed the defense. So um, a lot of that is, is credit to, to the way that he, he came in and, and played tonight. half-court situations, three of his five made baskets were as a cutter. They ran this play twice, which is a great way to get Ingram to the rim without having to have the ball in his hands. He already has a physical advantage over his defender, but now you combine that with the fact that the defender is backpedaling and it's tough to stop. They also used him a bit more on handoffs, which allows him to work more to get open off of the ball. He also got an assist on this post up, which is somewhere I'd love to see them go to more with him. but he did go five for 14 from the field in large part due to him being asked to score out of pick and roll situations. He did have three assists off of pick and rolls though and I thought this was his best read of the night hitting a cutting Corey Brewer from the weak side. But after not going to it much in the first half, the Lakers ran too many ball screens for Ingram in the fourth, and it nearly cost them the game. I wrote an article for Form Blue and Gold explaining why I don't think running so many ball screens for him is good for his development, and I've left the link in the description. I don't believe that they're maximizing his effectiveness or the team's effectiveness when they do this. I think the cutting and off-ball action that we saw from him in the first half was a much better way of using him. Josh Hart got the start in this one, and it was great to see him play well, as he'd been struggling a bit. The Lakers won this game on the boards, out-rebounding Brooklyn by 18 and 13 on the offensive end. Josh Hart was one of the main reasons why. Offensively, his game was all transition and spot-up threes.
I also thought this was his best defensive game in quite some time. Here he does a nice job of sliding his feet and then getting a quality contest up. The Lakers didn't defend particularly well in the first half, especially when it came to Jared Allen rolling to the basket. The weak side wing was usually laid in tagging him and Allen made them pay. They did a much better job of that in the fourth. Here Kuzma gets belly up with him to prevent that option. They also did a much better job on ball at the point of attack. All in all they gave up just 14 points in the fourth quarter. A few quick shout outs. Julius Randle played with a level of physicality in the first half on the offensive end that was really impressive to watch. He continually bumped guys off of their spot and got what he wanted. But when Julius is at his best, he's playing right on the line of being out of control, and in the second half, he crossed that line. I thought Larry Nance did a great job with his activity, and this three was a nice surprise. Lastly, I thought that Brook Lopez provided the Lakers with some important offense in this one. Guys like Quincy Acey and Damari Carroll simply can't defend him in the post. I'd like to see Luke Walton try to exploit these mismatches more often rather than simply pull Lopez against small ball lineups.
and he even hit a couple of three balls for good measure. Alright, that'll do it for this one. As you may have heard, I'm doing this full time now. My goal is to create consistent and thoughtful content that helps you enjoy the Lakers on a deeper level. I'm very much dependent upon Laker fans to continue this work, so if you believe in what I do, please click on either the Venmo or Patreon link below and donate. Thanks so much guys, I'll catch you next time.